Well, hey guys, Dave coming to you from the paddock here in Southern Maryland. Um, no tobacco, um, no YTPC. Um, I'm going to read to you. If you don't want to be read to, that's fine. You can step off. If you don't want to participate in a video that's got nothing to do with tobacco, that's fine. Step off. I'm going to warn you, this is dangerous shit, okay? We are headed down, deep down a dangerous rabbit hole. But I think you need to know this stuff. Um, I think you need to be aware of how deep this stuff goes. Um, I'm going to read to you from a document. Um, it's a document called Silent Weapons for Quiet War. I'm probably just going to read the introduction to you today. It's it's pretty long. It's about 50 pages. I don't need to read 50 pages to get you the whole concept of the book. But I will start skipping around at some point. But you need to hear this. So pay attention. Maybe even stop what you're doing. Um, you don't need to look at the screen. I'm not going to the screens. I'm not going to the screens today. I have no... I, I didn't gin up any sort of diagram for you. I'm just going to read to you. So... This could almost be like a podcast. But you don't want to be doing something that takes you away from what you're hearing. If you're interested in kind of what we started talking about yesterday, then pay attention. Um, I'm starting to teach you. I don't know. That's, that sounds so authoritarian. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to. I'm trying to teach you how deep this goes and what we're up against as a as a Western society. So so anyway, I'm going to read. And um, if you like being read to, you're going to love this. And if you don't like being read to, you're going to hate this video. Um, I don't want to make it long, so I'll probably break this into four or five readings. We'll see. Um, anyway, this is dangerous shit. Be careful. Um, you know, you're playing with fire with this information. All right, guys, here we go. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems or silent weapons on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. Uh, slavery and genocide. That's paragraph one. This manual is in itself an analog, de declare, an analog declaration of intent. This manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny. Otherwise, it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, Whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without the full knowledge of and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic war warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. I'm going to read that again. Furthermore, Whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without the full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between the said person or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and to analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without a loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest do not deviate from them. That's the introduction. Welcome aboard is the title of this. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War. 
called the Quiet War, having conducted using subjective biological warfare, warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. It's dated May 1979. This section, this book was written in 1979. So let me go back and read this. This publication, written in May 1979, marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War, having conducted, being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. May 1979, that was written. So I'm assuming at this point I have your attention. So I'm going to keep reading. So this section is called a historical introduction. I'm going to read the entire historical introduction to you. Then there's a political introduction. And then we'll take a break and see how long this is. Historical introduction. Silent weapon technology has evolved from operations research, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of operations research was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies. It was soon recognized by those in positions of power that the same methods might be useful for the totally controlling a society, but better tools were necessary. Social engineering requires that the requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information so a high speed computerized data processing system was necessary which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation relay computers were too slow but the electronic computer invented in 1946 filled the bill the next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947. Then in 1948, the transistor was invented and promised great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventions under their direction, those in, powers of, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the world control the whole world with the push of a button. I'm going to read some of that again. Relay computers were too slow, but the electronic computer invented in 1946 spilled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947. Then in 1948, the transistor was invented, and it promised great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventions under their direction, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952, the original Great Grant period terminated and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful as it bore out the publication of some of its results in 1953, suggesting the feasibility of economic and social engineering. And they actually give the title of it, Studies in the Structure of the American Economy, copyright 1953 by Wassily Leonotif, International Sciences Press, White Plains, New York. You can actually go on the internet and search that title. It's out there. It's very hard to get it. The only source I found wanted, wanted me to pay him like a thousand bucks for the book. I haven't done that yet. 
engineering in the last half decade of the 1940s, the now quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold-plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954, with the creation of the um, Menzer, I, it's blurred out. In 1954, the promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen in seawater and the consequence availability of unlimited social power became a possibly possibility only decades away. I slaughtered that. With the creation of the Menzer in 1952, the promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen and seawater and the consequent availability of unlimited social power became a possibility only decades away. The combination was irresistible. The quiet war was quietly declared by the international elite at a meeting held in 1954. Although the silent weapons system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system was never, has never suffered any major setbacks. This volume marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Quiet War. Already, this domestic war has had many victories on many fronts throughout the world. This is the political introduction. In 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades, before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power. For the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of the energy sciences. This section is called Energy, and it'll be the last section I think I read today. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue. Who will be the beneficiary. In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern, although the so-called moral issues were raised. In view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intellects, intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such a people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Let me read that last paragraph again. In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such a people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace, and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, wealth, of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. I'm going to read that part again as well. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace, and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting 
the natural and social energy wealth of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name Silent Weapons. In conclusion, the objective of economic research as conducted by the magnets of capital, of banking, and the industries of commodities and services is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of the society must be brought under total control. It must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke in long-term social duties from a very early age before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents in the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. Let me read that again. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low-class elements of the society must be brought under total control, must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke in long-term social duties from a very early age before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower-class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents in the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort so that the I can't read this word so that the meat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. I'm going to read that again. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the meat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the in superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extri extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintaining some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. All right, guys, I'm going to stop for the day. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's uh, not sure how intelligent it is to read this on the open internet, but. To some extent, I don't care. Um, I think this starts to fill in that base layer that you knew was out there. You know, most of you that pay attention to my channel have some sort of niggling suspect. Um, you know, some niggle you can't scratch. There's something out there. There's puppeteers out there. There's a there's a base layer of evil. There's a base layer of intent that's going on um, that's controlling all these other pieces that we are. You know, we're distracted. Our attention is distracted by all these various pieces. And I have a feeling that you've always suspected there was something below all of it. And um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of, I don't know, prove to you, but, you know, show you that I believe our concerns are well-based.
I'm not sure how to end this, so I'm going to just end it by saying, you know, I'll keep reading. If you guys are interested in this, there's a long ways to go to get through this material, but the hows if they intend to do this are in this book. And, um, you know, the book's 50 years old, so they've been working on this for 50 plus to 25. So we're at least 75 years into this. And um, I have a feeling you suspected some of that as well. So I think it's deeper than you thought. I think it's been going on longer than you thought. I think it is much better orchestrated than you even thought. Um, so hopefully this starts to wake people up. I guess that's it, you guys. We will talk. We'll talk again tomorrow on Friday. I think we'll do a fireside chat tonight as well. But anyway, I don't want to mix this up with any other topics. This is uh, uh, too serious, too dire, and um, and a little too dangerous, to be honest. So I'm not going to mention anyone else's name in this video i'm not gonna put it up as a vr or you know as a continuation of any anyone else's conversation this will just stand alone as me reading this to you all right guys talk to you later bye